everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be eight things they don't tell you about childbirth, c-section addiction. C-section addiction. <laughs> so about a year ago I did a video on 10 things that they don't tell you about pregnancy followed by a 10 things that they don't tell you about childbirth and you guys really liked that. The only thing that I did focus on in that 10 things that they don't tell you about childbirth were my two natural births. And a lot of you guys had requested for me to do a version where I talked about my C-section, uh, which was my first birth and then it was followed by two natural births. And I kind of thought that I'd already done it and it only just occurred to me recently when I got a comment a couple of days ago about doing an updated C-section version that I hadn't actually done that video. So I'm sorry to you guys out there who did really want to see a C-section version of that. I'm finally getting around to it. I'm so sorry about that. I definitely didn't want anyone to think that I valued my natural births more than my C-section because obviously there is so much value in any way you choose to give birth or any way you end up giving birth. For me, I'd never planned on having a C-section, but it doesn't mean that it was any less special than my other two births, which is what I'll talk about more in this video. So to jump straight into it, I obviously will be talking about emergency C-sections because that is the only thing I have experienced. So some of these things may not apply to someone who has had a planned C-section or multiple planned C-sections because you may know what to expect and everything. So the first thing that I want to talk about may apply more so to those emergency C-sections more so than the planned ones in that it goes so fast but also so slow. So from the time when I was actually told you're probably going to need a c-section I'd really like to put you into theatre. It was I want to say half an hour. I can't be too sure because it all was very much a blur. It happened extremely quickly but it was probably only about half an hour and I didn't really have the option to say no because the reason for the c-section was that Heidi's heart rate was lowering with each contraction and she felt as an obstetrician as a professional that Heidi's life was in danger at that point, that my labor was failing to progress further and the best thing for Heidi at that point, which for those of you guys who don't know was the name that I ended up giving my daughter, the best thing for her at that point was to do a C-section and get her out as fast as possible. And usually when you're having an emergency C-section, it's because the babies, the mothers or both lives are in danger. So it's something that does need to happen very quickly. And in that respect, you don't really have a whole lot of time to think it over. I could have said no, and they would have been forced to sit there and wait for my labor to progress naturally. But in that case, I could have been putting mine or my daughter's lives in danger. So I just decided to go ahead with the C-section and within minutes, I'm not joking, I had a whole team walking into the birth suite where I was previously you know, working on getting that baby out naturally, doing things like removing necklaces. I wanted to keep my wedding ring on. They just taped over it. They obviously have to prep you for surgery, which means getting all of your hair out of the way, putting that in a hairnet, cleaning your body, making sure that the area is completely sterile. And then there's an element of having to sign documents as well. I can't 100% remember what documents I did sign because it all was such a blur. I remember reading it because at that time they'd already wheeled me out of the room and I was sitting outside the operating theatre and I couldn't actually enter until I signed these papers. And I know it had something to do with saying that if something happened, then the hospital wasn't liable for it. And it probably had something to do with like a next of kin or something or other as well. I really don't remember because it was such a blur. I don't recommend not reading documents prior to signing them. But in that instance, I was very much all over the place. So I did just sign it. And then at that point, I shut my eyes right as they were opening the door to go into the operating theater. And from then on was the actual surgery part, which for me felt like it was extremely slow. And if you ever have had a C-section before or you've heard about C-sections, you might know that from the time they make that first incision to the time the baby's out, they can do it in a couple of minutes. It's very, very fast and that's for a reason. If your life or your baby's life is in danger, they obviously want to get the baby out as fast as possible. But from the time they made that first incision to the time she was out felt like an eternity to me. Even though, like I said, it probably was only about a half an hour from the time they told me that I was having that C-section to the time that I was back in the um, recovery room. So it was it's very, very quick, but very, very slow at the same time. That is certainly not helped by the fact that it is cold. I never expected it would be so cold and so uncomfortable 
in the operating theater. For starters, the temperature is extremely low and they do that to make sure that everything is sterile. Obviously that's a big, that's incredibly important for any operating theater. And you probably only notice it when you're going in there and you're actually awake for a surgery. Generally people are put asleep when they're having a major surgery, unlike C-sections. So that was something that I first really noticed that I was very cold. On top of that fact, you also have an epidural. And as a result, I think one of the reactions of that drug is that you get quite shivery. I know that in any epidural I've had before, I've been very, very shaky and quite cold. I'm fairly sure that is one of the effects of an epidural. So I was very shaky because of that. I was also naked on the table. I'm not entirely sure if I got my facts straight there because obviously I didn't see anything. Like I said, I had my eyes shut, but Jane said that I was naked on the table. In any C-section that I've seen, like on you know the TV shows or any C-section that I've heard about before, they have that blue sheet that they cut a hole in. James reckons that I didn't have that. I don't know whether I did or I didn't. Maybe when he saw me that had taken it off already. But regardless, those sheets are only extremely, extremely thin anyway. So they don't do much. You're essentially naked on this table. And at that point, particularly if you're having an emergency C-section, you're probably pretty panicked as well. I know that I was. It wasn't something I had expected. I'm the kind of person that faints at the first sign of blood anyway. Like it makes me very, very nervous, very anxious, very shaky. And so that contributed to me feeling really cold and anxious as well. And the nurses were really great about it. I could feel her stacking blankets across my chest because that was really the only area she could get to. There was a sheet sort of coming down under my bust where they, you know, prevent you from seeing any of the surgery that's occurring. And I remember having my arms out like this and the nurse was, I had a nurse holding each hand and they were packing blankets over each arm and rubbing each arm to keep me warm. So they were beautiful. Like what lovely ladies are they to sort of help you out and try and warm you up? It's just that they weren't really doing anything. I think they were more trying to keep me calm more than anything else. And that sort of leads into my number three, which is the panic. And I don't know if this is the same for everybody, but I was definitely panicked. And I think that maybe if I had have known that I was gonna have a C-section, I could have prepared with like music or a meditation or just been a bit more mentally prepared. I wasn't at all. So like I said, from the second those operating theater doors open, I shut my eyes. I didn't want to see anything that indicated that I was in an operating theater. I didn't want to accidentally see any of the tools. I don't know if that's possible or not. I didn't want to see the bed. I didn't want to see the nurses with their masks on. I didn't want to see any of that. I just wanted to sort of pretend that I was somewhere else to try and keep myself calm about what was happening. I did that as well by just chatting to the nurse. I remember I was talking to one of them about funny childhood stories I had had and James had had in those few minutes. And I remember her talking to me about those as well. And that certainly made it a lot easier for me. But like I said, I was definitely shaking. I was definitely quite frightened. That was just the way that I figured I would manage it on such short notice. I am the kind of person who can tend to be dramatic about these kinds of things. I do have phobias about hospitals, but also at the same time, when you consider the fact that it was such a big operation, I don't think that my anxiety about the whole thing was unwarranted. It's just that it's something that you have to very quickly find a way to manage. Otherwise you could have a full blown panic attack. I'm sure they experienced those a lot. But having said that, that was only a few minutes that I was really able to take myself out of the situation and pretend I was somewhere else. Because very quickly, once they started to to actually take Heidi out, I could feel what was going on. That brought me back to reality fairly quickly. And I remember one of the surgeons saying to me, you're about to feel some tugging. And I feel that's quite common. I've heard that quite a fair bit with C-sections that you do feel a tugging sensation. I remember being a lot younger and one of my mum's friends was talking about the C-section that she had had where she actually felt the knife. Not a pain, but like a tingling of the blade running across her belly when they made that first incision incision and that was enough to scare the pants off me. I'm so glad that I didn't actually feel that myself but I have heard of other people having that sensation. The first thing I really did feel was the tugging 
and pushing, which I never ever expected and I was completely unprepared for because there was a lot of pressing on my rib cage to the point where I felt like they were gonna break my ribs. And I kept saying to them like, ow, you're hurting my ribs. That's really, there's a lot of pressure there. And the surgeon was like, oh, I'm so sorry. I don't really know if they were sorry because it's probably a fairly normal thing, but they were probably just saying that to make me feel better. But once again, while that felt like probably, it felt like they were doing it for five minutes. It probably really only was one minute maximum. Like they were so, so fast about it. And even though it definitely hurt, it wasn't a pain that was unmanageable. So it's not something that I would be scared to go through again. It was just something that I didn't really expect. And of course, once Heidi was actually born and I heard that first cry, I remember opening my eyes for the first time since I had entered that operating theater and I saw James's face directly above mine. And he had this like, like this surprised look on his face because even though we knew we were having a baby, you just, it shocks you every time. Like the first cry that you hear is always like, oh my God, there's a baby. That is my baby that's been in my belly all these months. And it was just such an incredible feeling. Immediately I started bawling my eyes out because I was just so happy that she was finally there. And after having had that C-section experience and two natural experiences that followed that c-section i can tell you right now that feeling was exactly the same with each baby i did get a few comments after i had had heidi saying you can't call that a birth like a c-section is not a birth i just want to make it extremely clear that a c-section is a birth and just because you don't have as much control in the delivery of the baby doesn't make it any less special and does not mean that your body did not go through an incredible ordeal just to get that baby there and from that point once they put Heidi on my chest and I was able to look at her and study her face. Time did pass quite quickly. There was about 20 minutes that it took for them to stitch me up and that went extremely, extremely fast because I was so focused on this beautiful baby and being able to finally have her in the world. That whole stitching period just completely did not matter to me. So if you're someone who is scared about having a C-section, just know that it really only does go for those few minutes from that first incision to that baby being there, just a couple of minutes because afterwards it doesn't matter. You're so focused on this new little person that that whole stitching up period doesn't really seem to take as long at all. Now, something that I only discovered very, very recently, like perhaps only a year ago, is that when you have a C-section, they actually take your uterus out of your body to stitch it up and put it back in and then stitch the muscle layers and then all of the other layers. It's not just one stitch. They have to do a whole lot of layers and that involves removing your uterus completely. That did not occur to me at the time. And I don't know why, because it makes so much more sense that they take the uterus out and make sure that everything is still intact. They usually do a curette, which is where they remove some of the afterbirth from the inside of your uterus, meaning that you may have less afterbirth later on. I can't say that that was the case for me. I definitely had quite a lot of afterbirth to deal with for a number of weeks after Heidi was born, but I won't go too much into that. But it never really occurred to me that they actually take an organ out of your body. I have heard that in some instances, they actually take some of your um, intestines out as well. I didn't know that. I don't think they did that for me, but apparently that can happen from time to time as well, which once again goes back to the fact that it is such a major surgery. And it didn't even occur to me when Heidi was being born that I was having a major surgery. I knew it was a big thing. A lot of people don't put it in the category of a major surgery because it is a birth as well. I'm glad that at the time I didn't know that they were actually taking my uterus out because mentally for me, I would have felt like that was much more insane. I don't know if that makes any more sense, but I feel like that would have panicked me just that little bit more knowing that an organ was actually coming out and going back in. I know that's so gross to talk about you guys, but I do try and keep it real on this channel. So please bear with me. And that sort of trails on to number seven, that C-sections still do damage. I know I've heard a lot of friends, even before I have kids and even now who haven't had children before say, oh, I'm going to have a C-section because I don't want to push a baby out. That'll ruin me. And while I do understand where they're coming from, I don't think people realize that C-sections do a lot of damage as well. Like obviously I've said it a million times already, it is a major surgery. They're having to cut into your body. They're removing an organ. They're putting it back in. They're doing a lot of stitching. It's a very, very intense procedure and it makes the whole 
recovery period a lot more difficult in my experience. Some people have to deal with very large scars or scars that don't heal very well. I was extremely fortunate in that my scar is so low that if I tried to show you guys it would be pornographic. Like it is so low that no bikini would ever be skimpy enough to show my c-section scar. That is how low it is and as well as that my c-section scar is only this long. Like, I don't know how that is, but when you consider the fact that you only have to be 10 centimeters dilated to deliver a baby, it makes sense that they would only need to do a 10 centimeter incision and then sort of squeeze the baby out through that. It is very, very small. And I was actually so surprised when I removed my bandages after about two weeks after I had Heidi to see that it had healed extremely well. I expected to see like scabbing and everything, which was not the case. It was all completely healed and only very, very minor. So now it's been seven years almost and it's healed to the point where I can barely even see it anymore. So it's not something that I have to live with forever. There's no sign of having had that C-section. Whereas I know some ladies do get the vertical cut I don't know if they do those anymore, or an incision that's closer up to their belly buttons, and as a result, end up having an overhang that occurs. I didn't get that, so I was very fortunate in that respect. However, those few weeks after I had Heidi were a nightmare learning to be a new mum, because obviously she was my first baby. I did have help from my mum and from Jane, but it made me feel very inadequate. There were times where I couldn't even lift Heidi, and I certainly couldn't bathe her. I couldn't lift her car seat into the car. I couldn't drive. And there are a lot of things that can tend to make you feel inadequate as a mom. I definitely didn't feel like I was doing my job properly. And I felt like I was a failure, even though it was something that was completely out of my control. On top of that, the drugs that they give you are very intense. It's the first time I learned what oxycodone was because that's what they gave me. And they actually gave me a script to take home with me as well. I stopped taking it after a couple of days because I, I did not like the feeling it gave me. I remember lying there on my bed after a few days and just watching the ceiling spinning and I was like no I'm gonna deal with the pain this is too much for me I didn't like that dizzy feeling and I didn't like not being able to feel comfortable walking around with Heidi given that I was just so dizzy all the time that was obviously something which impeded me being able to be a new mum but that isn't the case for everybody lastly I think it's really important to mention that while there is a lot of judgment about how different women choose to give birth or how women end up giving birth because birth plans don't always go as you expect them. Every birth is special and every birth is a birth. A birth is simply a baby coming into the world. Whichever way they do that, that is still classified as a birth. And while I wasn't the biggest fan of my C-section, like I would choose a natural delivery over a C-section any day, predominantly because of that recovery aspect. Some people really do prefer that C-section experience, particularly if it is planned. I've met people who have had emergency C-sections and then have gone on to have a planned c-section afterwards and said that it's a completely different experience so while it very much boils down to the individual there are a lot of people out there who love and enjoy their c-section experience Anyway, that wraps up my eight things they don't tell you about C-sections. I hope you guys enjoyed them. I hope I didn't ramble on too much. I know in the past my videos have been 10 things that they don't tell you about childbirth and 10 things they don't tell you about pregnancy. But given the fact that my births and my pregnancies, you know, that's nine months, my births themselves ranged between 17 and 23 hours. C-section, that was really only 30 minutes. So I didn't have as many things that I could talk about. However, the things that I could talk about I could obviously ramble on forever about so if you have watched to this point in the video thank you so much I super appreciate your time I would absolutely love to hear about everybody else's experiences in the comments if you would choose to do your birth that way again and why because I think that's so interesting of course it's so important for everybody to remain open-minded to everybody else's experiences if you are currently pregnant and you're really worrying about you know whether you're gonna wind up having a c-section what a natural birth will be like I'm gonna link my other pregnancy and birth videos down below for you guys to watch if you haven't already I hope you enjoyed this one I hope it may have eased your mind about a few things a little bit probably wasn't the most positive video because my experience was very very frantic so I'm sorry if this is scared anybody off but also I hope it gives you a little bit of insight into what that experience was like anyway I want to thank you guys so much for watching today's video hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and want to see more videos like this and other than that I will see you guys next time bye